that they... And here's a, a reading from a London listings magazine. It says, under the heading Rock, Reggae and Soul, Tuesday the 9th, uh, Vivian Stanshall, Rawlinson Dog Ends, with Jack Bruce, Bloom, Bloomsbury Theatre, 8pm, uh, £7, concessions £5. Eccentric, ex-bonzo dog vocalist Stanshall has certainly got some heavyweight talent built to accompany him as fellow ex-bonzos Roger Ruskin Spear and Rodney Slater, John Halsey and Ollie Halsell from the Ruttles. I'm not reading this awfully well, but I hope you're getting the uh, point of it. Uh, Dave Swarbrick, ex-Fairport uh, Convention Fiddler, John Megginson from Scaffold, Susie Honeyman, ex-Mekons, and Pete Moss lay their collective reputations on the line for an unpredictable night. If all that were not enough, uh, tonight legendary cream bass player Jack Bruce supports. Potentially, it's a whopper. So that's this Tuesday, the 9th, uh, Rawlinson Dog Ends at the Bloomsbury Theatre in London with Viv Stanshall. But we have much of the same in session tonight. <laughs> the early frost faded like a sour-faced wedding photo from the sullen, snoozing face of Rawlinson End, and elfin sunshine danced, gilded each wart and wrinkle on the back of its neck. But the beard of the house, the pickle or great maze, was in deep shadow. The pickle, commissioned by old Sir Hilary, had been designed by Incapability Brown, and its scratchy intricacies would baffle a rat. Of hawthorn, boxwood, choke cherry, blackthorn and dogwood, it had long ago collapsed upon itself or overgrown to form lightless tunnels, and folks began to say that folks had died in there. They had. Sir Hilary arranged for a priest to travel from Idlewater to consecrate the ground, and this gentleman entered the pickle with holy water, hosannas, a corned beef sandwich, a terrier, a supply of aniseed and a ball of string. He was never seen again. After Brown's death, the maze grew even more ominously scruffy as none could be persuaded to enter the pickle for the trimming of it. Years later, when Sir Henry became master of Rawlinson End, the only sign kept fresh painted on the estate was This way in at the entrance to the pickle. And Sir Henry was at his ingratiatingly persuasive best when exhorting creditors or relatives to take a pretty route to the house. And it was here, too, in the pickle, that for the first few months of its monstrous, lonely adolescence, the dinosaur Sir Henry had shot hid until it was strong enough to limp into the woods fringing Rawlin Pond. The creature grew and grew. This time, Jack really did sell the cow for five magic beans. At first, it consumed only plants, but as its size increased, it trampled shrews, rabbits, old dogs, and the odd unfortunate sleeping it off peasant. They were squidged. Women shivered by the hearth, waiting for their men to come home. Their men never did. Only the sad roars of the sauropod informed them that a fiend, other than Sir Henry, was loose in the grounds. 
and the fear of fear crouched vulture, knowing and patient, hyena wary and waiting, and terror hung like black kites draped on the breathless thermals. In this shocked greenhouse, only the drug companies and breweries flourished, as in any battle, be it of nerves or knives. For so fast as Dr. Head stuffing might prescribe a kindly word and a tranquilizer, so mine host and hearty Seth One Tooth could dispense a twiceness of scrumpy in a twinkle mug with a rough laugh. It was from the Archimedean spirals and cul-de-sacs of the paralogic pickle that Hubert got the good idea of being at least part-time a mole. His bedroom on the first floor at the back of the house peeped over the feminine green lawns to the chestnuts, and if he craned to the right, in the distance floated the fabulous grey flat threat of Concreton estate. Concreton did always seem closer. Burnham would come to Dunson then. Verne vidi vempe. I came, I saw, I concreted it all over. Hubert didn't crane often. He was pinning sheets of blotting paper over his windows because he believed it trapped and absorbed the energy of the sun. Each night he would take down the blotting paper and squeeze a little bit of cosy into his room. Then he would snuggle into his hammock and dream of being invisible and asleep. He never slept. Hubert was unusual. Mrs. E was staggering back from the village with a bathtub of milk, when from out of the springy thicket, Scrotum flicked a thingy. Harm! Ugh. What is it? It's a thingy, Mum. <laughs> well, I don't like it, and you can laugh. There is a thingy in Rowland's Inn. Half the village is out of its wits. Mm. What about the other half? The other half? I called to see Sir Henry. Reckon he's got the healing hands. Just got to touch him. Gord, you should take an holiday or something. Go and stay with that nice Mrs. Stretch down by Wanker's Grunge. Scrotum stuffed the thingy into his pipe and sucked up a moist poo of shag. Arr. Stay with her? Could you come bar me? Nice, gold ever should bloom. An awful woman. She never boils her flannels, especially after her jack died. Now, he was a lovely man, and I know how she got him, too. Of mm. course, it could charm the ladies, tell jokes, play the banjo. Oh, gee. Jack was a fine figure of a man. He was very fond of rope. <laughs> on the billiard table with his nose on the pink spot. His monocle had strayed to the black spot and it stared at him. Good God, if you're my wife, what are you doing underneath me? Pulled himself away from the unwinking creature and in so doing, discovered a roll mop in the corner pocket. <laughs> Women. He decided not to eat it. Oh, something wrong with my eyes, sliding down. Oily rainbows getting grey, damn it. Can't do this much longer. Henry got to his feet as though he were collecting his body from a pilfered skip. He felt like a very raped dustbin. I've traded my feet for radiators, I suppose. That's why women are so anxious to get married to me. <laughs> Florrie drifted into the billiard room with a rather guilty smile. Why, Henry, dear, I... No, you didn't. Been up to the box room to gawp at Hubert's portrait, I suppose. You still in love with my dead brother? It's disgusting. Mm. I feel a bit queasy this morning. I... I think I'll have a soothing pint of creme de menthe to settle the stomach. Well, he's a truly marvellous man, Henry. Will you have an olive, will it? No, a couple of pickled onions will do me, just to be on the safe side. Scrotum! Marvellous. Humphrey was a ruddy freak. Caught him naked once admiring himself in the mirror. Looked like the letter H. Bad enough having a giant in the family, but a satyr. He was a marvellous ventriloquist, Henry. Well, he put on one hell of a performance at his memorial service. Rigor mortis rot. My mother nearly fainted away with a coffin lid flew off. Even the choir had to cover their mouths to stem the vomiting. <laughs> but Mr. Slotton did light a candle on it. First candle I've seen that could blow itself out. <clears throat> Went straight through the chapel roof. 
And I had to call a surgeon with a mallet to bang the runny thing down before we could nail the lid. And I'm damn sure it was Hubert doing all that ventriloquist. Open the box and let me out stuff on the way to the grave. Most upsetting to a man of my sensibilities. <laughs> Scrotum! Neither of them had much upstairs. My brothers used to play horseshoes and hoopla with each other. When they were boys, it's too horrible to imagine. Oh, I've got photographs to prove it. God's grew your cheese. You still love my brother. Oh, yes, dear. And my love died slowly, like a struggling wasp in a mug of too sweet tea. Seems to me you're in need of treatment. Yes, I have all the confectionery makings of a fine psychiatrist. Well, I'm no stranger to fits and seizures of all brands, and I know the wormy secrets of the grave and the depraved. Compassionate, tolerant, and since I am myself normal in every respect, I can use myself as a yardstick against which I will measure the less fortunate. Scrotum wheezed himself into the room, his fez askew. I'm sorry I'd be late, Master Rick, and I had a bit of a stroke on the way after here. <laughs> a stroke? You stinking squid. If I find anything untoward or sticky, I'll... Well, just take that anyway, just in case. Now, the thing is, I feel a bit queasy this morning, so waddle off and take a peepo at me doos, see if there's anything I've eaten. Right, oh, master, I didn't <laughs> I'll I'd whip down to the kitchen for an egg whisk and a colander. Well, make sure you wash them first. I don't want any queering of the evidence. All righty <laughs> uh, and Then I want you to pop down to the village and buy me a beard, a ping-pong table, a can of red paint and a pickaxe. I intend to become a psychiatrist. Oh, and some drugs. A couple of sacks full of the sort it should do for the mo. Right, oh, master. This is E. The now huge Diplodocus had toppled unwittingly several towers conveying television plasma, and the starving inmates of Concreton were at the mercy of their unfed imaginations. And despite the reassurances of high-rise radio Concreton, we block your ways with air, that airdrops of Valium videos and vibrators were on their way to brighten your day, the brutish, bewildered populace rioted in Pompeian tumult. Horrible to hear were the yelps of the looting dispossessed. Here we go, here we're going, off to sunny Spain. Oi, 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 a viva wogana. And the shrieks of the elderly as they were ambushed by brigands and robbed of their sleeping pills and inhalers. Inarticulate lorries carrying condoms and bondage equipment to the beleaguered of Concordon, too felt the chill of it, and pulled over into cardigan lie bays, cowered in laybys, sulking, able only to grunt and honk. They steamed themselves unseeing and unseeable. And in an act of unprecedented statesmanship, the mayor declared an end to closing time and also a happy hour at chemist's shops. But it didn't help. In the fool and bladder, rough, defiant English wartime humour, Nobody ever saw it could know the why or the what for. I'm not a man what's easily scared, but all on a Sunday after English noon, and sunny as toast and butter, oh, would spit and twiddle most a man's skulls. I never see the light. Dredged up from hell it were. Probably a geranium. No, no. It were like the Queen Mum's at. Rearing, mauve and nasty it were. Wriggling, wriggling and nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. 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 Oh, I seed it. Mm. Like a bug, like a, like a, like a big bullfrog's bogey. Nasty, nasty, nasty. 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 Like a drunk cucumber with big googly eyes. Nasty, 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 nasty. Like that thingy Marjorie Bickles found in, uh, stuck in her. Nasty, nasty, nasty. nasty. Like a big, huge green pickle. 
nasty, nasty, nasty. Perhaps it was like the green frog the Chinese believe lives on the moon. Nasty, nasty, nasty. No, more like a pickle. Like a big dill pickle with legs on. Hmm, Sir Henry had a manservant as were nasty. He were called Dillo, Ahmed. <laughs> Henry brought him back from the Indies, Ali Gully man. Magic and stuff. Allah's muttering. Nosy bugger, too. Inquisitive, were he? No, no, just nosy. Had to fire him, of course. Where'd he go? Up the chimney, of course. <laughs> 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 fell off his unicycle in a glade he had not noticed before. It was clipped and smooth as snooker bays. He lay there gasping, gazing up at the sky, when some 20 feet above the trees appeared a curious green head. Henry, I'm Diplodocus. <laughs> Diplodocus? Which one of you is Diplodocus? I'm Diplodocus. No, I'm Diplodocus. I'm Diplodocus. Centurion. Crucify them. I'm sometimes called a tips of maniac. No. Yeah. All right. Diplococus, if you insist on being so very English. The head vanished and seemed to be having a conversation. Oh, there are two of you blighters back in there. No, I'm talking to my sacral brain. It's sort of in my bum. Oh, I talk to my bum every blooming morning, swine. <laughs> but this is old man talk. I, I'm not very good at sums, but I think I'm about 190 million years old. Or there. Yes, I feel like that in the mornings, too. Look, uh, first off, I'd like to take you to the fool and batter. It's a bit of a stretch. Do you mind if I, um, ride? Uh... I'd rather like a plowman's lunch. See, I stuck my head into the fool and bladder place, and there was this man with bread and yellow stuff on the table. Well, while he was screaming, uh, I, I had a little nibble, and very nice it was, too. God, do animals dream? Well, I'd, I'd rather a, a, a curried beef with a tug through's vindel extra sauce on it myself. Um, I'll have to be bareback. Um, and then we'll let those buggers know what it means to offend uh, a friend. And you are my friend, of course, of Sir Henry Rawlinson. I shall call you Plunch, and you may live in my lake. And with one ladder of trees, Sir Henry was aboard the back of Diplodocus and riding towards the fallen bladder. Just then a wild-eyed, red-haired man burst from the bushes and van Goghed himself to his knees before Sir Henry. Are you the man? The man with healing hands? Yes, try one of them. Oh, feeling any better? <laughs> the madness, the madness is chasing me out there and then inside. The dinosaur peeped shyly over the lofty arms. Yeah. Oh, oh, the madness might manifest the great beast. This is more nightmare than the food. The food? Are you a relative? No. Are you one of uh, my new patients? No. Then you must have escaped. Am I the victim of a dream? Well, of course you are. 
bloody quarter wit. Tell me about the food while I um, strap myself onto my new friend here. In the dining hall, there's butter wall, approximating food, and the sweet fare on your plate today that you voluntarily chew. So swallow up the lukewarm slop before you hit the loop. You won't find it in the rules, but one butcher's at your stools will convince you. The sight of it will disgust you, but the thought of it again your horror bliss. Inside the fool and bladder. Stop right where you are. No juggernauts coming through and ruining this village. Quite right, officer. My experience, all geoboos do is smoke hashish and wallop drums, and none of them can play billiards. But it's not this village I intend to ruin. We are off to Concreton. And, officer, I commend and salute you. Carry on. Henry directed Dipodocus toward the sun, setting behind Concreton. Lunch at the canter, if you please, forward! And Henry rode magnificently towards the loathsome grey towers of the doomed estate. The entirety of the bladder emptied out onto the cobbles to cheer and wave their mugs. Seth made a flag of his apron, and hats and caps tossed and whirling darkened the sky. Next time, Henry treats his first patients. A typical case. You're full of wind, and you won't let it out. Well, I, you iniquitous noodle, am going to painfully puncture you. There you are. Freedom and no drugs involved. Forward! Viv Stanshall and friends on 1FM, we block your waves with air and uh, Viv and another assortment of friends at the Bloomsbury Theatre in London on Tuesday. Well worth seeing, I should imagine.